my time to start planting the garden yet. It's still a little cold outside, but guess what? You can start growing those seeds inside your home right now, which will give you a big jump start on your beautiful harvest. We have Marta Nielsen here with Utah State University Extension Office, and she says you can actually start your harvest four to eight weeks sooner from plants that you've started yourself. That's right. And I think we were channeling spring today because yes. we were thinking about this. Exactly. Okay, so tell me exactly how do you do this? Right, so let's start over here. Um, so a few reasons you'd wanna start seeds. First, if you've saved seeds from your own garden, you'd wanna start them indoors yourself, or just for the fun of having that greenery in your home now in the, in the middle of winter. And, and you just, I mean, you're basically starting your own, you're getting your own starters ready. Yes. Cause you're eventually take them outside. Yes, okay, so exactly. what do you need to do this? Okay, so you need a pretty basic setup. First, you'll need some sort of a container to plant your seeds. You need a good seed starting um, soil mix. You don't want to take dirt from your yard. What would be a good one in your, um, in your opinion? So it, this says right on it, seed starting mix. Okay. So you can find that at your local garden center pretty easily. I always get overwhelmed. I walk into an aisle and there's a million kinds of dirt and seed stuff and I don't so know So just look do. for those keywords, seed starting, and, seed starting, and you'll be good to go. Okay. What else in terms of like the potting part of this? Right. So you can get a little tray at the garden center like this that comes with little pellets of, of soil, mm -hmm. or um, you can use materials from your recycling bin. Well, I like what you have going on right here. This looks like yeah. our little Easter bucket, so we yeah. use at our house. These are we're going to use for the wheatgrass, but you can see over okay. here I've used an egg carton oh, to yeah. start seeds. So you just punch a hole in the bottom so you get good drainage going on there and make sure that it's clean and, and sanitized before you put your seeds in. I notice that you have like a beautiful setup here, a lighting setup. Yes. Do you need this? Yes. So, okay. so light is a key part of starting seeds indoors. So if you have a really sunny window, that's great. But if you don't have ideal um, sun in your house, you can have a grow light like this. And you can DIY that or you can buy a setup. Is this a DIY? This or one is. You did this? Girl, My husband did. I won't take credit Get for the that. husbands involved in this. <laughs> They're going to benefit yeah. from it too anyway. Yeah, so just you want to make sure you have a, a light that, that's meant for um, oh. growing plants, a fluorescent light, and you want it to be about two to four inches away from your plants. Let's talk real quick about the benefit of doing this in your own home, starting this in your own home, the right. benefit to it. Right, so you know, like you said, you can sometimes see a yield from your plants sooner if you've started them indoors. Also, it can be lower cost than buying those plants that someone else has already started. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite benefits is something you can do if you have young children. They love seeing those little seeds and putting them in the dirt and spraying them. Yeah, they get involved in it as well. Yeah. Um, a few other quick tips. After you plant your seeds, you want to make sure and cover it with plastic wrap so it stays really wet and moist in there. Okay, trust and that spray moisture it with inside. Water. Okay. You don't ever want them to dry out before they've sprouted. Then remove it after they've sprouted and get them under that that growing light. When do you, okay, say you buy all this, you do all this, you see, you have all this wonderful fun with your kids, you see those sprouts coming up, when do you actually take them outside? Right, so you wanna do it after after the spring frost, and different plants will have different requirements. Um, so it takes about a week for the seed to germinate and sprout, and then four to six weeks for it to get big enough to take outside. Okay. Um, so mid-March is the perfect time to start seeds. So you have time to get all your supplies and get ready, build your little grow light set up, and then mid-March is when you want to start those. And then if you have a fail, you can start over if you do it. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. that would be my house. I'd forget to water it. I know it. I know it. Um, okay, so then you can take it outside. Uh, let's quickly come over to here. Wheat, okay. Wheatgrass, that is super popular, and I can yes. see how cute you have this display here. Yes, it's so fun. You don't have to be a, a vegetable gardener to have that is green this hard spring to in do? your house. It's so easy. Do, are you ready to get your I, hands a little uh, dirty? Yeah. Give it to me. I got okay. it. Okay. So you can use, um, this is a little more forgiving than starting your vegetable starts. You don't have okay. to use a seed starting mix. You can use a potting soil. Um, but do you want to just scoop some of that okay. soil How into much? our little cups? So if I had a little bucket like this, because you can see these, you can even get these at the dollar store right mm -hmm. now. So. Yes. Okay, but how much do I want to put in there? Um, so you want to give it maybe a half inch or an inch uh, okay. from the top. From the top. More. Yeah. Yeah, you want that grass Don't to be Don't hold back is out. what you're telling me. Don't yes. hold back. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then I have some wheat berries that I've soaked overnight in water, and you can see they start to have like a little 
Um, oh, they're already sprouting. Are yeah. they sprouting? They start to sprout a tiny bit. Let's see if we can lean this forward so folks can see. And that just helps speed up the process and they'll grow more quickly. These little, you can see the little white coming out. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. So then you just want to spoon a really thick layer of this of onto that here. onto your soil. Okay, I can do this. Perfect. I can garden in my like, home. Just, just lay it on there. <laughs> just lay it okay. on there. Really the getting more, it in. The more wheat berries you have, the thicker and fuller your grass will Where do you, be. Can you just buy these? Where? Okay, most people will have wheat just in their food storage. Really? It's not anything special. It's just hard. Okay, hard is that wheat. enough or do I need That's more? That's perfect. Okay. So these are already a little bit wet, but you want to make sure you spray it and get it okay. nice, nice and wet. That will speed up the process. This could be such a fun project with little ones. Yes, and then you just okay. cover it with your plastic wrap. Again, or you can put it in a Ziploc bag and, and once they start to sprout, again, put them in a sunny window. And so this tall one has been growing for about two weeks. That's it, two weeks? It grows really quickly. Wow. And then these ones I cut down so we could add decorations, but it's it's so fun. And again, spray it wow. a few times every day. Every time you think about it, Just spray give it, it a little spray. And then by Easter, you're gonna have this beautiful exactly. wheatgrass to play with. Yeah. This is cool. I love this idea. Okay, one thing I see over here, the will are, are they willows? Is that yes? Willows. These are pussy willows. So I, I see a lot of people bringing branches into their home. Can branches still bloom when they're in your home? Yes, they can. It's called forcing forcing the branches to bloom or to blossom. So what do they need to do that? Okay, so there are a few different plant varieties that you can force branches on. So this is willow. Um, Forsythia is another really common one. That's the beautiful yellow blooms you see. They're bushes that are mm -hmm. they bloom in early spring. Um, you can also do dogwood and um, cherry and just a few different blooming Basically, you plants. just need to try. Just go grab one. So is yeah. there a way to cut it off or do you need to do... So you want to make sure that the branches that you cut have well-formed buds on them because those okay. the buds are what will turn into but that, the these are, are these are already budded. These are already bloomed. So bloomed. these are... I love this See, I'm word. learning these my are, technology. I don't even know the, 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 the terminology here. Yeah, these are called catkins. I just love okay. that. Um, so See. then, so you'll cut the branches, you'll bring them inside and place them in like a lukewarm, tepid water. And then you want to put it somewhere that's cool and dark, like a basement hallway okay. or closet is the perfect environment. And keep an eye on the water level, make sure that um, you've got good water in there and they should bloom in about... Those a, look fantastic. ...in a week or two. Fantastic, all yeah. great ideas. I love this, things you can do on your own with your kids or just get creative with your decor, I appreciate it. Okay, Marta, tell people where they can find out more information. You have an upcoming class they, they can we participate do. in. We do, we have a seed starting class at the Botanical Center in Kaysville. That's on February 22nd. Okay. Um, you can register for that online. We have our online calendar where you can find that link. Um, and we also have our gardening website, garden.usu.edu with so much information so for your many good ideas. Well, thank you so much for bringing all this in. I'm feeling very springy right now. I yeah. feel like I should go out and do some gardening. We've got some great weather, so thank you so much. Thanks.